It has been a decade since the regional assistance mission to Solomon Islands landed in Honiara. In this video presentation, the Ramsey Special Coordinator Nicholas Coppell speaks to local journalists about the changes or transition that is taking place in the mission as it marks its 10th anniversary in the country. It can be reduced to three, three questions that I want to talk about. Why, what, and when? Well, let me go back to 2003, when the Prime Minister of Solomon Islands and the Parliament of Solomon Islands asked for external assistance through the Pacific Islands Forum, and Australia and other countries responded, the country was in the hands of the militants. Government finances had been completely broken down. Government services weren't being delivered. The situation was beyond repair, just using the resources of the Solomon Islands government. So they asked for outside help. So when that help came, it took into account the situation which this country was faced with not just problems of law and order, there was a problems with government as well, and problems with government finances. So the intervention that came, yes it included soldiers, yes it included police, but it also included public servants, primarily from Canberra, but also from Wellington and other capitals around the region. And they went into government ministries and they started doing the job of the public servants. Now I go back to 2003 because we need to understand transition? How have things changed? Clearly in that level of assistance, that type of assistance can't be continued forever. You can't have people from overseas running the government when it's an independent sovereign country forever. For a short term, for an emergency, yes, the rest of the region responded. But that's not a permanent state of affairs. That was a measure designed for that time for that problem. So since then, things have been changing. Once the situation was brought under control in terms of the guns being surrendered, the law and order being restored to the, to the streets, government finances being brought under control, budgets being developed, after that it started to happen. The next focus said, well, we need to start training up, building up Solomon Island public servants and officials so that they can do this job again, the way it was before. That, if you like, is the beginning of transition, shifting from in line to capacity building. And it happened progressively and it happens relatively quietly. But over time, the number of advisors has reduced. Police, for example, have stepped back from frontline policing, largely. We don't see Ramsey's participating police force doing street patrols in Honiara. So that, that is part of transition. It's been happening for quite a while. But th that first question was the why. And I started to answer that by saying, one, the initial model was a special one. It was an extraordinary intervention and it's not sustainable over time. So the first reason in answer to the question why is because we have to make things back to the way the normal way of doing things and building up Solomon Islanders and putting Solomon Islanders in charge. That's the why. The other part of the why is we want to be able to provide long-term assistance to Solomon Islands, but Ramsey is a short-term intervention. So we need to move across into more normal, more typical types of development assistance. I'll talk about the three areas in which we're changing, Ramsey's changing. The first is the development assistance. So Ramsey's had a large aid program in Solomon Islands, working in the Ministry of Finance and Treasury, Inland Revenue Division, the Customs, in the Law and Justice sector, the High Court, the Magistrates Court, Director of Public Prosecutions, Office of the Public Solicitor. These are much less visible to the public, but they've been very important in terms of, um, of the law and order because you need to bring people to justice. So you need the justice sector working efficiently from top to bottom. The country was almost bankrupt. You had to get government finances back so that you can pay for public servants to do their jobs. We're down to around 60 advisors. <clears throat> that number is going to remain, but they're not going to remain part of Ramsey. So Ramsey is going to let go of development assistance. It's going to shift across into AusAid and NZAid. 
the people working in the ministries won't see any change. All they'll know is instead of them being a Ramsey funded project, it'll be an AusAid funded project or NZAID funded project. But we've already achieved the big reduction in advisors. That's happened over the last few years. So that part of transition has, really un has already happened. That, that, that's the aid program. Ramsey also has, as you know, a military component and a policing component. We currently have three platoons of troops. That's around 170 people. The last time they were called out into an operation was in 2006. So they haven't been responsible for law and order in Solomon Islands. That's a job for the police. Ramsey Participating Police Force are remaining in Solomon Islands for the next four years. So in terms of the security of Solomon Islands, with transition, the people will not feel anything different. But what it all means with this, these changes is from 1 July, where Ramsey had three components, civilian, military, police, it will just become police. That's what transition is. Ramsey's development program has played a major part in getting Solomon's back on its feet. How does transition affect this important aspect? Ramsey is what they call like a post-conflict intervention. And the type of assistance that we provided uh, reflected that. So that's doing the in-line work. Now Solomon Islands is... is normalized but it's still a country which requires a large ass assistance from overseas in terms of development you know the the average income the per capita income in the country is not high so it's going to be receiving overseas aid for for an, quite a number of years but that's the job of AusAid to do and it needs to be long-term assistance so we're looking for programs that might be in ministries you know five or ten years or more but Ramsey's short term it only gets funded you know, a few years at a time. We can't commit into the future. It's a normalization of aid, and that's why it's happening. We want to say that progress has been made and show everybody that it's been made, um, and we don't need that post-conflict type of program of assistance. It just needs a normal development assistance program. But the assistance is not stopping. It's just it's going to move to where we can be sure it'll be delivered for many years to come and not stop at some point in the future. For the past 10 years, RSIPF has had support from both the Ramsey Participating Police Force and the Ramsey Military. People are concerned that the RSIPF will no longer have the military support. This is a situation of um, public disorder, which we, co we call it, a riot. You know, in any country in the world, you know, you use the police force. Military are trained, you know, to kill. I mean, they're there to fight wars against other countries. You, you shouldn't be using your military against your own people. That's not, not the way things are done. It's uh, law and order within the borders of a country are a policing operation. So the first will be the RSIPF, and then the assistance will be with the participating police force. We certainly haven't seen a situation that's required uh, more support than that. The question of the rearmament of the RSIPF is one that the public continues to ask. Any decision in relation to rearming of the Solomon Islands Police Force is a matter for the Solomon Islands government. Um, we have said to the government if they decide to, to do that, we're willing to, to help them in terms of developing guidelines, protocols, governance arrangements, building armories, assistance of that. But we cannot go ahead with that until such time as the Solomon Islands government makes the decision. You know, all countries in the world need some armed capability. Um, and it's understood that Ramsey will not be here forever. And at the moment, Ramsey is providing that capability from something as simple as, you know, if a crocodile is terrorizing a community and needs to be shot, you know, Ramsey will do that at the moment. But who's going to do that after Ramsey leaves? Ramsey's special coordinator, Nicholas Coppell, answering some of the most asked questions about the transition phase of the mission.